All right, guys, Saturday, March the 7th, and we're just back here starting part two of this uh, bonnet structure repair project. And where we left off at the last video was we were working on this uh, other little support bracket, which needs to be uh, cleaned up. I'd done some previous work on this, and it repaired some holes, as you can see by the shiny bits where I'd angle grinded those uh, areas that I'd filled with weld. So now we're going to go back and we're going to clean the top side up, probably with a... Um, wire brush and an angle grinder with a flap disc. The bottom side I think we're going to hit uh, with the uh, glass, crushed glass media like we did for this panel. So we'll finish this piece uh, to begin with. That'll start the day off. And then I think we're going to have to get into um, actually removing the bonnet from the car and flipping it over and having a look back at the underside. I had done some work previously cleaning up the uh, the surface rust was on the underside of the bonnet. We hit it with a wire brush and a flap disc under there. And we also uh, hit it with some rust treatment. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. I'll have to do a bit more cleanup before I get this ready to go into black epoxy primer. Uh, that's the intent here is to try to get this brace welded back in or these uh, structural pieces welded back in. But before I do that, I've got to hit the underside of the bonnet with epoxy primer. So that means that I need to clean those areas up to be able to do that. I have a window of a couple days. Uh, tomorrow is supposed to be quite warm outside. Monday is actually supposed to be even warmer. I would really like to try to get this into, uh, you know, into epoxy on the underside. Then this structure welded in. Obviously, I've got to epoxy this before I actually weld this in. So there's a bit of a process involved in getting this done, so we'll take it step by step. And as I mentioned, the first step is to really get the structural piece cleaned up. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'll stop yammering on, and we'll get to work. All right, we'll be back. All right, guys, here we're where we're at. We've just got the uh, compressor charging up. So I'll just give it a quick uh, hit with the uh, angle grinder with a flap disc. There's our starting point. Cleaned it up a little bit on the inside as well. So we'll get the remainder off with the, uh, the crushed glass. We've got the bucket ready to go over here. We've got our bin emptied. There's kind of the mess it makes uh, outside of the blaster, so I've got a big, bit of a big sweep up over in that area. I'm trying not to walk on it so I don't get any moisture in it. I'm uh, kind of leaving it until the end. I've been trying to keep the doorway fairly uh, swept clean so it doesn't track on my shoes and get water in the media. So. We'll crack the door open. Uh, again, we've got, uh, it's not too bad of a day outside today. It was minus seven this morning, but it's warming up now. And we're slowly getting rid of our snow, which is a good thing. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll crack this open. And uh, we'll be ready to blast in a few minutes. So I'll bring you back when we're done. All right, guys, step one done. There's the inside of that support brace. Looking pretty nice and uh, clean. And the exterior also cleaned up very nicely. So we're good to go on that support piece. So I guess the next thing to do, as mentioned, was to uh, take the bonnet off the car. So we'll clear a little bit of space in this area here. We'll set up a couple of uh, work stands. We'll flip that bonnet over and we'll have a look. A little dusty in here. Whew. And cold. Okay guys, we've uh, taken the bonnet off the car and flipped it upside down. And we just put that structural piece back in there to see how it fits. And I'm glad I did those, uh, what I call witness marks. You can see what I'm talking about where, see I've got an alignment here with that hole. I've got an alignment here with the center hole that's still open right here under my finger. And we've got a, a plug mark over here. So I'm glad I've got those to help line it up on the front here. And you can see that I'm actually going to have to move this up a little bit. So it's good that I have that, uh, those alignment marks. I'm happy I did that. I probably should have done a few on the sides as well, just to make sure everything lined up there as well. But uh, I did actually make some lines. I've made some Sharpie marks before I actually um, took this off the uh, bottom of the bonnet when I did this initially. So anyway, I was just putting that up there for fit. And uh, we'll remove it now. And we'll take a look at where I'm at. So again, I did some work on this and wire brushed it and uh, put some rust converter on it. But I'm thinking that I'm probably going to go back now. You can see it's fairly pitted. I'm probably going to go back now and just give it a really quick blast just to really up under the lips and um, wherever I see some heavy, heavy pits. 
and uh, we'll clean those out as best as we can. Doesn't look too bad back here. Maybe a little work done there. That's where the support structure goes all the way down. So maybe I'll do a little bit of a quick blasting. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do that inside the garage or maybe do it out in the snow and just not worry about collecting the media. We'll figure something out. And I also figured that, let me just put this structure piece down over here. Lean it up against the fridge. I also, I'm going to do a little bit of hammer and dolly work. Um, you can see there's some depressions here. I should be able to fix these little areas up a little bit better. When, since I have that bonnet structure out, I can actually hammer and dolly this, whereas before I couldn't. One other thing I noticed, which is kind of interesting, and uh, let me just pull the structural piece up again. There's the uh, bonnet, uh, so that the basically where the TR250 emblem on the outside of the bonnet, there's three holes there you can see. That's where the, uh, the tag fits for the bonnet. And I just noticed actually, and maybe, this is kind of interesting for anybody that's got a TR5 or a TR250 that these cutouts actually here in the structural piece, this hole and this little cutout, the little bite here, actually corresponds with these three holes here for your emblem. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, Alright, so I guess we'll move on to cleaning the bottom side of this bonnet up the best we can. And then the next step, obviously, will be to break out the epoxy primer when it's a little bit warmer out. Hopefully tomorrow we can do that. But let's get the uh, under bonnet cleaned up in the meantime. All right, I'm having problems with the camera viewfinder again. So looks like it's about time for a new camera. Anyway, we'll see if this uh, actually comes out. So uh, here's our outdoor sandblasting setup. Oh, neighbors think I'm crazy. Anyway, we'll uh, waste some blasting media out here, but we'll do what's got to be done. And we're particularly concerned with that area underneath the, uh, the lip of this bonnet still looking a little bit rusty and a little bit ragged. And we want to do these edges as well, as I'd mentioned, this area back in here. And maybe we'll do a little bit of uh, blasting just under the edge here and uh, towards the back here where it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get in with some regular conventional, you know, flap disc or wire wheel, that kind of thing. So anyway, we'll uh, break out the blasting hood and we'll go to town on this area back in here first. Okay, here's how we're doing. So as you can see, it's making a pretty big difference. So definitely looking better. I've done down in this area here. So we'll just continue on. All right. Okay, one more little section to go here, a little bit down here, and then I want to follow this up along this structural piece line. And maybe do a quick blast along this leading edge here. And then the rest I think I can do with a, uh, a DA to get the rest off. But uh, that's looking pretty good. I'm getting up under that lip, which is good. So yeah, just thought I'd give you a quick look at that before we finish All right, guys, off. back inside the garage and uh, just give you a quick look of it before we hit with the uh, DA with uh, 80 grit on it. So we did uh, along that edge, a bit of here, a bit in there. And we got the uh, major parts of where that structure goes and up under the lip here, which is a good thing. So yeah, I think that looks uh, much better. I'm glad I wasted the, uh, the blast media. It was, you know, basically $20 worth of blast media I used there. Incidentally, a couple of my, uh, my viewers and uh, Triumph aficionados uh, mentioned a few things to me that are actually not uh, bad suggestions. One being... Uh, one of my viewers, Pat, uh, mentioned that um, a good way to uh, blast things would be to get a small uh, two-man tent and blast inside, which is a great idea. As long as it's got a, a floor in it, that would probably work and it would keep the uh, media contained pretty well. And I was suggesting that uh, something that might work well for me up here would be an ice fishing hut, which is like a little pop-up shelter uh, that you could stand up in. It's a little bit more heavy duty. I'm not sure if they all have floors in them. I think they have, some of them have floors with cutouts or little uh, Velcro in sections for obviously where you, if you know what ice fishing is, you cut a hole in the ice and you fish through the ice. So obviously there would be a hole in the floor at some point, but I think there are panels that fit in there. Um, anyway, something like an ice fishing hut might work well, and actually it's end of season up here. So I might be able to pick up a, a very cheap ice fishing hut for projects like this in the future where I need to blast inside the garage. One of the other gentlemen, John, also suggested that it would be a good idea to get an exterior um, air-fed mask, which is probably a good idea if I'm going to be doing 
anything in here with the garage closed and the doors closed, obviously the uh, the breathing air is not uh, not very good. So uh, an ex uh, an air fed mask would be a good investment as well. They're fairly expensive. They're about uh, about a thousand bucks Canadian for a half decent one. So that might be something I'll uh, have to look at investing in the future, particularly if I do things like blasting inside an enclosed tent. I think you would definitely need an air fed mask. So anyway, just uh, that couple of uh, things out of the way. So I'll break out the DA now and we'll go to town. We'll finally get rid of the remnants of the uh, the old emission stickers here on the 250. I've already made note of where these were and have some photos of those for reference so we can put them back. I do have the new stickers. So yeah, so let's go to town with the DA and uh, we'll see what it looks like after that. We're getting a little closer. See you in a bit. As I mentioned before, it's amazing how tough the uh, factory paint and primer is. That's a DA with 40 grit and it barely touches the uh, factory paint. Anyway, we got it scratched up pretty good. Um, we did coat uh, this uh, sandblasted area with some uh, rust killer. So we're just waiting for that to, uh, to work. Uh, still got a little bit of uh, rust pitting. I did hit it with a wire brush and loosen th things up a little bit. I didn't go too high in the pressure on the uh, sandblaster. I didn't definitely not want to warp the hood. So uh, yeah, I didn't get all the rust, but I got I think most of the rust out, most of the critical rust anyway. Um, so yeah, so I think we'll just let that dry for a bit. We'll come out here and uh, we'll probably have to clean this panel up a little bit more. There are some uh, little areas that I didn't get to sand that I'll have to hand sand. And obviously we want to give this panel a big uh, clean before we do any epoxy priming, which will hopefully be tomorrow. So I think what I'm going to do is, uh, we'll let, like I said, I mentioned this, I'll let this dry. We'll get the heater cranked up in here overnight and get it, the garage nice and warm to get us to be to a point where we can uh, actually epoxy prime this tomorrow. And then we can fix that, fit that structure back in and uh, weld that in. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. We'll probably come back out tonight for a little bit and uh, do a little cleaning on this panel. And uh, we'll go from there. See you in a bit. All right, just had a quick bite of dinner and we're back out here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to clean this entire panel. We're going to get the right uh, red scotch bright out. We're going to scuff this whole panel up. We're going to clean in all the seams, uh, a little bit of lacquer thinner, and uh, we'll get that cleaned up as best as possible. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hammer and dolly this front section. As I'd mentioned, there's a few uh, dents that I can get out before that support structure goes back in. So that's the next thing we'll do. And hopefully we'll get this ready to be epoxy prime tomorrow. So I'll do all the cleaning tonight. We'll give it a quick uh, further wipe down tomorrow morning before we spray, spray epoxy. I plan on leaving the heater on overnight so it should be nice and warm out here in the garage. It's supposed to be warm outside so that'll help if I have the door open to let some of the epoxy fumes out. So anyway, let me uh, get the scotch right out and we'll go to town. Alright guys, just coming up to about uh, 8 p.m. and we're gonna call it uh, a day out here. We've got it cleaned down pretty well. Uh, I'll give it another cleaning in the morning. Um, I straightened all the flanges out. Um, I gave them a quick uh, hammer and dolly. They look pretty good. So those are ready to go. Um, I do have one small welding to repair to do at the nose on the headlight, uh, sort of where the dip is, where the headlight is. I've got a little small pinhole that I need to repair there. So we'll do that in the morning. And uh, then we should be ready for epoxy. I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to work this because obviously the support structure needs to go into epoxy as well. So the hood needs to go into epoxy. I have limited space out here, so we're going to have to figure out how we're going to do things. I was going to hang the support structure from the ceiling, but I need the space here to paint the uh, inner inside of the bonnet while it's flat. So anyway, we'll have to figure something out. So that's it for tonight. We'll sleep on that, and we'll come up with a plan tomorrow morning. See you then. All right, guys, Sunday morning, about 9 a.m., daylight savings time should stay a little lighter at night a little darker in the morning still got some snow on the ground we're hoping this goes away in the next couple days it's supposed to be warm today and tomorrow oh, cats everywhere cat there cat over there beautiful day Let's head into the garage. We'll uh, crank the heat up on full and uh, we'll get ready to start the project for today. 
lots of epoxy priming in my future. You can see my sandblasting radius out here. <laughs> what a mess. Anyway, once the snow melts, you'll never know what happened. All right, so I've got the bonnet flipped back over uh, so you can see the top side. Here's where I did a little bit of hammer and dolly work. It's uh, definitely less uh, pronounced, this big dent that was here, than it was before. So we'll do a little bit of filler work there to make that look uh, a little bit better when we get to that uh, stage. Uh, right now we're going to replace our work on this little area here where I've got a little divot out of the uh, nose of this eyebrow. So we're going to build some uh, weld in there and get that ground down before we uh, go into the next step which is epoxy on the interior of this panel. All right, let's break out the welder. Okay guys, gave the uh, garage a bit of a clean up in preparation for spraying paint. We've got my uh, mixing table all ready to go. Got to bring my gun out still, but we'll do that shortly. Got my material on the, on the floor in front of the heater just warming up a little bit. Got the uh, panel cleaned off. We've got the floor uh, cleaned up as best as possible. Got everything covered that needs to be covered. Uh, I've decided that I'm going to do the underside of the bonnet by itself. And uh, then we'll do the uh, interior uh, structural panels as well as a, uh, I've got a, a rear fender over there that needs to go into black epoxy. So maybe we'll do those three pieces at the same time once I get this done and I can stand it up out of the way somewhere temporarily. So that's what the plan is. So we'll just wait for the temperature to get up. It's uh, 60 degrees Fahrenheit, about 15 degrees Celsius in the garage at the moment. So we'll uh, get it up to at least 65 before we spray. So we'll uh, probably go inside, have some breakfast, and uh, get prepared to come back out in uh, probably about an hour or so. All right, that's it for now. All right, we're at 65 degrees Fahrenheit. We've got the uh, compressor charging up. We're gonna give this panel one more wipe down. And then it's going into black epoxy. So here's your final look of this panel before it's black. All right guys, just coming up to 3 p.m. and we've had the parts out here in the garage just uh, drying for the last few hours and I would say they're pretty much ready to go, almost ready to handle, but we're just going to play it safe and uh, let them sit. I did actually do that inner support structure as well. I just moved the bonnet forward after I'd uh, done a couple coats on and hung this here and did a couple quick coats of epoxy on there while I had some mixed. Didn't look too bad. I got a few runs on this piece. Um, obviously trying to get paint down inside there. It's a little bit difficult. I should have narrowed my fan pattern a bit more. When I actually go to paint this car, I'm actually going to use my mini gun on this area to get uh, into those spaces a little bit better. With the epoxy, it doesn't really matter too much what it looks like. It's going to be uh, sanded before the next primer goes on top anyway. I did get a bit of a run here that you'll never see because this is the obviously the side that uh, fits flat to the uh, to to the bonnet. So that's ready now to ready to go back in and get welded. But like I said, there's no hurry to do this. We'll probably end up doing this tomorrow. Now we'll let this dry overnight and make sure it's good and dry before we go ahead and handle it. Well, that's it, guys. So that looks uh, pretty good. I'm certainly glad I went to uh, the whole process of removing that structure structural piece. You can see actually how pitted the metal was under that structure. You can probably see it here. And uh, that's obviously going to be covered by that uh, by that structural piece. When, when it's back in there you'll never even see that. So anything that's outside of that area we're going to be doing a polyester primer so it's going to fill a bit of those indentations anyway. But the rest of the bonnet actually looks pretty good except for where that structure was laying on on top of it. All right, that's it for now, guys. We'll uh, get back out here later on. All right, guys, just coming up to uh, 5.30, and I think the pieces are, are dry enough now for me to play with. So we're going to uh, break out the uh, welder, and we are going to plug weld that uh, stiffener panel back in place. And uh, I did not epoxy this piece yet. I'm thinking I may just go ahead and just uh, etch prime the back of this and be done with it and then uh, as of course the top is going to be primed this whole panel is going to be primed again 
with polyester primer at some point to uh, fill any other little imperfections that you might see in the hood. So it will be primed and uh, body worked at a later stage. But we want to get the structural piece back in anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'll take you back or I'll bring you back when I have some progress made. All right guys, everything is now welded, uh, plug welded along the front and both sides. So uh, we'll break out the grinder and see if we can uh, make that look a little bit better. So that's in there solidly. So yeah, do some grinding. All right guys, we're just about to call it a night out here. I think it's around uh, 8 p.m. So we've got all the uh, welds ground down along the front. I've just put a little bit of uh, red oxide primer on the bare spots to keep it from rusting. Ground it down that side. And we're looking good on that side. So the last piece we have to do is this reinforcement piece. I've just lined it up where it needs to go. So obviously I need to uh, prime that before I go ahead and weld that in or prime the back side at least. The holes are lining up that I um, still have um, not filled yet on the backing piece. So we'll uh, definitely leave a couple of witness uh, holes like we did in the last piece and just fill those as we go along. But that's what that's uh, going to look like when it's finished. So we're getting there. Surprising amount of work uh, goes into this uh, bonnet structure. And I'll be glad to, do, uh, to have this done uh, tomorrow. So we'll get out here tomorrow and we'll finish this off. All right, guys, Monday the 9th, and we're back out just to finish off this project. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little repairs here. We've got a little bit of excess metal, and uh, we've got some holes to plug, so we're going to do that. Got a few holes to plug here. I'm going to leave a few witness marks so I can get this aligned properly, but there's a couple here that I need to, uh, to fix. Unless I can get a plate underneath there and can clamp this, that would also work, but... Uh, let me check that out to see if I can actually get a clamp under there with a uh, metal backing plate. Otherwise, I could probably just leave that. Anyway, we're going to uh, break out the Dremel probably to do this area up here. Um, just it needs a little bit more finesse. So let me grab the Dremel. We'll do that. And uh, I've got the back of that support piece uh, primed and ready to go. So uh, let me fix that area up first. All right, guys, we've got that remaining support structure welded in front and back and ground down. I've cleaned up a few of the areas where we've uh, burnt the epoxy primer with the welding. I just wire brushed it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to mix up a small batch of epoxy. We'll coat the top side of this uh, structural piece as well as the repair areas. We'll also grind off that red epoxy primer, or sorry, the red um, uh, etch primer uh, that we put on last night and we'll actually put some epoxy on it now since I'm going to mix some up. So that's where we're at. So we'll do a small batch of epoxy. We'll spray that and we'll come back for one final update on this bonnet. All right guys, final update on the bonnet structure repair part two. So everything is complete now. We've sprayed the uh, black epoxy on the uh, other structural piece and we've touched up the areas where we wire brushed Sprayed a bit more epoxy under the nose of the uh, car where we disturbed that from uh, all the welding we did up the front there. So that looks good. Happy that's done. Quite a bit of work involved, as I'd mentioned I think previously. But I'm glad I did it. Anyway, we'll move on to something else. I'm thinking it's about that time of year where uh, Looking at the forecast for the next 14 days, it looks like we're above zero during the daytime. We're still not above zero overnight, but I think I'm going to risk actually opening the garage door up. So maybe I'll do that next. I'll uh, tuck this bonnet out of the way somewhere safe, and we'll get the garage door open. At least one of the garage doors open. All right, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. All right, both bikes out of the garage. Looking pretty, uh, pretty dusty. Hopefully that'll all just uh, wash off. No permanent overspray. All 
Let's see if they start. They haven't been plugged in. They haven't been on a tender, so I doubt they will. The RT is still showing it's got battery power according to the uh, display. Anyway, we'll give them a shot, just for fun.